Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Gabriel Brent, and we also have uh, John Early here. Um, we are both uh, Appazone's traders. Uh, we are uh, day traders moving into the swing trading realm, um, and uh, uh, we are looking at different markets, um, uh, looking for the movements of supply and demand, uh, support and resistance, and uh, understanding context. So. As we do this, uh, we are going to be covering a number of markets um, and uh, pretty much just working our way down this list. And we want to talk about context, um, trend, and uh, where to get in and where not to get in. So uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a forecast here as well um, as price is moving along. So uh, starting out here on the, uh, the Aussie Yen, um, we have uh, price moving from uh, supply up here down to demand, okay? And along its way, uh, we've come into a, a couple different zones, or we've created a couple different zones, I should say. And uh, that's what it looks like on the big picture. So um, we can be uh, buyers down here, sellers up there. But because it's formed these levels on the way down, uh, what I would be watching for is really the bounces in between these two levels here. Okay. Uh, I would like to see price come up here first uh, before I want to sell again, and then I want to be a buyer down here. So uh, that's what I'm looking at for the next week here. Uh, we will be revisiting these uh, markets every single week. Uh, just so that uh, we can track our progress and uh, just look at the imbalances of supply and demand. So uh, what is the significance of the color of, of the zones? That is a good question. Uh, the more times price bounces on a level, um, it changes the color of the zone. Okay, uh, so if you come down here, uh, aqua is a brand new fresh zone and then blue is uh, after the first bounce, or what I like to call the money bounce. Uh, orange is two or more, three or more, so on and so forth. Okay, so brown means that this level has been hit a few times down here, and uh, we could see uh, a flip flop of that area um, because the supply and demand will be shifting over time. Okay, so that's what we're looking at from the big picture. Um, those type of levels. So that's on the weekly. Then we drill down into our our daily um, and uh, looking at the daily we can kind of see this picture happening here so if I'm looking to uh, run with a trend I have the the app trender here also applied um, I want to sell high and buy back low which means I really don't want to be a buyer right here okay um, because I know where the weekly zone is and there are the two weekly zones and let me just simplify this just a little bit for us and clear it up. So here are the most recent levels here on the daily time frame. Uh, you can see the, the top zone and the bottom zone down below. Um, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, and so if I'm going to be a seller or running with this downtrend that I feel is happening, uh, I really need to wait uh, to where it's not in the middle of all this chop. Okay. Now, uh, I have three different time frames plotted here. We've looked at the weekly and the daily. When it comes to enter the market, uh, we're going to be using a 60-minute time frame to do so. Okay, uh, so that's the way that I work my my things here. Uh, what is the Appetrender? Uh, the Appetrender is a really cool tool that I made uh, several years ago, and it helps define the trend. Uh, it helps keep you in the, uh, the trade even though you uh, get major pullbacks. Um, it uh, requires a certain amount of momentum for price to actually push the trender in one way or another. So it's, it's a uh, proprietary uh, algo trender. So it's, uh, um, and yes, it can just remain flat for days or months or years. Um, and as price is chopping on it, it, it won't turn it over until momentum says that it's time to turn over. Uh, so that's a little bit how it works. So 
Um, if it's flat like this, it just means that we're arranging and that we're stuck in a range. So you can see how flat the trender is. And sometimes it goes absolutely as, as flat as the, uh, the, the crosshairs on my screen right now. And if the color in the background is changing from green to red pretty quickly a lot, you're most likely in a broad range where you're getting really strong trend moves back and forth. So there's a lot of ways that the trend is good. Sorry about that, Gabe. I just wanted to add, a, add those things. Yeah, not a problem. So that's a little bit with the Aussie N. Uh, no entries on this because it's playing in the chop. Uh, or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's right. So moving over to the Euro Aussie. Um, and again, it loads up on in three of our time frames here. I have all those charts linked together. Um, and it looks like we got some space to rock and roll. That's actually pretty cool. Um, now it's just a matter of uh, getting on board. So that that is the question. Uh, how do you get on board since we have all that space down below us? So let's see if we can find an entry from the, the weekly down into the daily. Looking at this, um, it's chopped out for a while here. Uh, I really want to be a buyer probably in like this area up here. Or excuse me, a seller. A seller, <laughs> okay, yeah. I want to be a seller in there. And that's a nice area of uh, consolidation to look for a retest, mainly when you know we look at the way that price made that lower low, the, the way it expanded and broke through that, uh, oh, whatever the January low was. And yeah, looking for a nice type of uh, retest in there would be a good way to follow a trend now on your entry chart that's going to be a deeper type of pullback uh, short type of entry but we'll want to see we'll want to see on that 60 minute chart we want to have good arrival into uh, this area that we're looking for we want to see you know good expansion to the upside because we want to just find a spot in that range where it will you know the bus will stop it will consolidate and then all of a sudden you're going to see really quick expansion to the downside. Right. So we're definitely going to be adding this one to the watch list um, coming into that level right there. So uh, I think that's really interesting. Um, and then if we actually, uh, we've identified it here on the daily mm -hmm. and then coming into the 60 minute level or 60 minute time frame, uh, I can use the fractal confluence of zones to, well, right there in the middle it, it is a nice blue zone. Let's see if we can actually uh, show any more zone. Nope, that's the, the only zone inside that daily is right there. So I'm going to be looking right there just to see if it bounces off there to, to see if I can't get an entry that's only a, a few pips big instead of uh, the whole daily zone uh, as an entry. Are you going, how many days are you going back on your 60 minute? Um, 20 days. <laughs> okay. I okay. probably need to change that to 90. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. Let's look at the Euro Yen. Euro Yen has been moving as such. It is. It looks like it's reloading right now. Um, into this big brown zone that we had from July of last year. Actually, excuse me. It actually formed really in like uh, May of last year. So that's kind of interesting that it's touched down there. It's popped off of it again, uh, but we've had many bounces on this level. So the more bounces, the weaker and weaker it gets. Um, I want to identify where that aqua zone from the upside is overlapping with the brown zone just because uh, we may be seeing a shift of supply and demand uh, happening here. So then I move it down to my daily and uh, this is kind of what it looks like on my daily chart. I want to be a seller 
more where that purple level is than this level right here. However, over the past couple days, I do see the inside candles, the consolidation, and it's just expanded to the downside once again. So uh, that is kind of interesting inside of that time frame. If I drill down into a 60-minute, uh, that's what it looks like. So uh, again, you know, just using multiple time frame confluence. And if you guys are using AppaZones, then uh, you can see this as easily. Uh, a lot of times I will take all three of these charts and put them all into one just because I can have multiple time frames plotting on one graph. Uh, but for this exercise, I want to uh, lay it out a little bit more. Okay. So that is what that looks like there. All right, so moving on. Uh, so we're going to be saying that we're looking for the trend is down and to continue um, on this. Look at CL. Uh, I'm day trading CL right now, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, we've had a really good. I haven't looked at the weekly levels, uh, but I'm not surprised to see what I'm seeing right there. Uh, I have been watching the the, uh, the daily levels, and it's just been stair stepping on its way down, and you can kind of see how the zones are forming on this thing. So uh, I've been able to take a good chunk of this to the long side uh, on the uh, the intraday basis, but um, I've been looking for this turnaround to happen up here, and I think it, it's it's happening. So um, today was an excellent day because uh, of just my read off of uh, the daily. So I'm really looking for the retest uh, of this level down here. Um, is what I'm looking for, and then uh, I'm day since I'm day trading this market, uh, I don't really look to uh, to use the 60 minute other than to to really drill in and uh, find where my bigger time frame stuff is as I'm trading off of even smaller charts than this for a day trade. Yes. <laughs> Um, it said, what settings are you using on the weekly? That's a good question. Um, basically, on the weekly zones, or on this weekly chart, I'm using about five years of data, um, just so you know. And uh, zone settings are all set to uh, standard zone settings. So that's, that's it. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I've, I've been really happy with Crude. It's just been moving uh, really awesome for me. So um, I hope it will continue. There's been really good two-sided trading, and that's just indicative of broad ranges. And, yeah, right now it definitely kind of seems that it's going, uh, has momentum to the downside, so it's going to be going back to the bottom of the range. So... Yeah, I, I'm probably looking to go short on my on my day trading over the next couple of days. We'll just see. Here we have ES, and it looks like we are consolidating after making a higher high on the weekly, right? Mm-hmm. It looks like we're, we could be stair-stepping, I think. You know. That, too. So, you know, we use metaphors a lot, and... Uh, the bus metaphor, and right now it's at a bus stop, so, you know, is the next big bus move, the big expansion move going to be down or up? Well, it does kind of look like the trend of it so far has been uh, uh, to keep going to the upside, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll just have to see what happens over the next couple of days of weeks and whether or not uh, that, oh, that 2013 daily level uh, holds up and acts as uh, the current bottom of yeah, the consolidation that's going on on the weekly. So if we're at the bottom right now, could easily be looking for a long if we're at a bottom of the range on the daily, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I would say that we're we're definitely retesting something on the weekly, too. Absolutely. That's very yes, yeah, so there's a weekly zone nested in there. So when it comes to our 60-minute, we, uh, we want to see... Well, 
Yeah. There you go. Sorry. We want to see, you know, pr type of price action that starts, you know, suggesting that the momentum is changing to the upside. So that's going to be with, uh, you know, having expansion moves to the upside that take out prior levels and start making higher highs and higher lows. So um, the pullback to uh, the consolidation that happened on, I guess, yesterday, the 26th, um, is, yeah, we got a pullback and then we got some buying today and we're just kind of, we're holding still. So, until it would, uh, you know, give us the downward type of price action on the 60 minute to, uh, you know, that would make a lower low, that would take out yesterday's low, then, uh, you know, we might change our tune a little bit, but until it doesn't, until it does that, the best thing to do is, yeah, probably look to uh, try to take a long at this bottom of the range. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because, uh, in my mind, this is this is turning into a, a range. You know, uh, it, mm -hmm. just like you just said. You know, it's it does feel like it's it's rangy right now. And um, you know, it's it's very possible that the range could like change, you know, nature and want to you know the rubber band will want to go bigger, uh, and it just you know quickly retrace down to um, oh, 1990. Um, but until you know until we're able to see a lower low below that 2030, mm -hmm. you know we need to treat this you know, like the range is still uh, what we just said it was between 2100 and, uh, yeah, 2030. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with you on that one. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's move on here. And now the question is, can you, where do you jump in on this? It, it, yep. It's probably a fair question uh, to place. So... Obviously, it would have been nice to be down here, um, but uh, it, that may be a little too aggressive for some people. So if this thing is really turning out the way that we think it is and it should be popping back up, um, what I am looking for is uh, is really a, a pullback to the downside. You know, I, I want to buy low and sell high. So I would really want it to pull back into this like uh, blue zone right here, um, and then try to take it up for the swing trade. Um, so that that would be I'd be pulling off a target um, off of these zones as well. My first target would come off here, and then I'd be playing the daily charts for my my next target up there at 2100. So um, so that's kind of where I'd be playing things from. So. Uh, maybe a real quick little uh, push to the upside here, okay, of maybe six points or so. Um, that's, yeah, seven points or so. And then I want to be playing the top of the range as well. So, and, and the beauty of these zones is, let's say you're not even able to nab it down, down here. Um, while it's still at the extreme of the range, and price starts breaking to the upside. Um, these zones on our entry chart can be used dynamically to the point where if we know that we're coming from the bottom of a broad two-sided range where there's quick big moves down and quick big moves up, once momentum starts happening from one of those extremes, if you're going to trade within the middle of the range, you should do it with the side that has momentum. So one positive that will come from if we're if you know the bus leaves right now and we're not long, well we'll kind of know that momentum is to the upside. So we can kind of instead of looking perhaps for a deeper type of pullback on our entry chart, um, maybe until we get to around 2080, why we're in the middle there of uh, 
you know, yesterday's price action, which was completely one-sided, um, we could, yeah, be looking for a quick little two or three bar pullback on our entry chart and, you know, hop on the bus while it's really going strong. So it's just, you know, that's why context is everything. And being able to really, uh, you know, pay attention to the relevant price action events that may change your context. Mm -hmm. So this is how I like to, to play things. Um, I like to do a little scalp down here uh, from that entry time frame and then pull the, the next target off of the most recent extreme and then they uh, make it good look uh, make it look good target so just pop it up to like 2200 you know uh, is that going to happen I have no idea um, but uh, it could you know uh, and most of the time I'm going to be getting these two targets here uh, that's where the bread and butter lies um, so this is, could happen this could not happen uh, but this is my style of trading. It's just applied to the daily time frame. So that's all. All right, let's move on to another market here. I'm going to go into the ETFs now. All right, so let's start with the big weekly charts. So we can see prices moving down or stair stepping down, you know, just like we're stepping downstairs. Um, and uh, looks like we've kind of found a bottom down here. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, we've had a failure of price action to break the low. It's formed the zone, formed all that consolidation. We've seen one pop up. Uh, I, I would like to see a retest of uh, these two levels just to see how strong they truly are. Or I think, you know, uh, like this week or, you know, last week looks like where the real buying was, but you could have been tuned in for looking at a double bottom type of trade to the long side. Is it counter trend? Yes. But you've finally been able to see a move to the upside on that weekly chart that showed very strong expansion and um, if we were to look at dead zones I'm sure there was a dead zone on that consolidation spot between 22 and 20. So the point being that that zone that we just got a retest of uh, from 18 uh, 59 to 1645 showed some relevancy. It showed an ability to, yeah, go up. But, again, it's a counter-trend type of trade. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very, uh, you know, you have, since context is different for a counter-trend trade, obviously, than it is following the trend, you're going to have some different parameters for, you know, the type of signal that you're looking for and the type of price action that, you want to see to warrant doing that type of trade. Absolutely, you know, and uh, we're we're basically trying to uh, say that hey, this is price failing to break low, so we're going to buy it when it's a bargain and uh, run it up. And so the counter trend may work great, but you don't know that's still that. Still, <laughs> yeah, well, and if anything, when it comes to double bottoms, it's not. You know, we don't want to just assume that even if price really gets going to the upside from this level that, oh, the trend has changed. If anything, all we know now is that, you know, we have confirmation of it being in a range from 21.60 and 23 all the way down to, you know, uh, 16.45. That's all, that's all, you know, we have confirmation. So... You know, if we do get the right arrival to the top of the range, we should certainly look for a uh, short type of opportunity to try to, you know, write it down to the, uh, back to the bottom. Yeah. So, um, so there's, 
good yeah. opportunities both ways. Absolutely. You know, uh, we, we could do it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so the question is, uh, if we know where those levels are on the big weekly time frame, where do we jump in on the uh, the daily? So uh, this is kind of what it looks like in the daily, all right, and where my drawings were. And then we want to zoom in here one more time to really find a great entry off of the hourly. So that's what I would be looking to do here. And uh, it looks like we have something forming right here that it could be that was really interesting down here, but we could still take this you know to the upside. Mm -hmm. for sure. And if we're looking to the downside, uh, well, I, on that daily chart, there was still a, a nice open gap that seemed like, you know, I mean, get open gaps, especially on daily charts, are, uh, I love, you know, I like looking for them because in more cases than not, they're, you know, prices magnetize, magnetize towards this. So if it's approaching, one of those magnets with actual momentum, like if we see price bounce, start bouncing like really quickly, you know, melts through that 1960 uh, dot area, and you know it's on its way towards uh, 20. That's the type of thing that we would like, you know, to see, um, in order to, I mean, the arrival for potentially looking for a. Uh, a short up at you know the top of that range mm -hmm. from the daily perspective and, and let's go see what it, this thing actually looks like on the mm -hmm. this from the 60 minute time frame because we can this is a cool thing about trading is we can like just drill into these yeah. levels so that 20.50 20 20.28 it is orange but that does kind of look like a nut a nice extreme area where I would like to see price come in too fast and then see some consolidation and then I also would probably take a look at what that blue zone look like uh, mm -hmm. up between 21.12 and 21.61 just because it has a smaller bounce count but you wanna you know when you're looking at the support and resistance that's nested within these bigger multiple time frames that you're you know identifying as your area of interest where you wanna be taking trades at, you want to go back and look at, you know, what happened at those support and resistance zones. And if you're going against momentum, you want that type of zone to be one that, you know, had a strong move into it and a strong move away from it um, when it was created. Not necessarily one that had a strong move a zone that had a strong move in one direction and then consolidated and then had another strong move in the same direction. So those are just some thoughts. Mm -hmm. So anyway for uh, targets and stuff like that I want to make sure that this zone stays firm and then uh, just popping targets along the way. Um, so first zone that we come up to is this level here which gives us right around a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and then our uh, second target is just that next daily zone level that we were looking at. Um, so that's kind of, uh, actually, excuse me, that's the, the, the weekly zone there. Uh, I'm mistaken. Uh, we could go all the way up to 2090. Um, so that's even higher. But, uh, yeah, you, I would do something like this in here. Uh, maybe even put it right there for your second target uh, yeah. since this is and a then, counter trend trade. And then you play the third mm -hmm. up towards 21. So uh, that's what I'd be looking for. And it's it hasn't lined up for an entry off of this right here. So um, getting in on board may be a little bit challenging. But uh, time will tell. So, uh, but it's definitely one that I want to keep an eye out on. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, 
stop the recording here. Uh, thank you for those who uh, have watched the video thus far. Uh, we will be doing another one of these sessions next week. Uh, for everybody um, in the live audience, uh, we'll be getting into more markets here and uh, answering questions and things of that nature. Um, and just make it a real great collaborative effort. So uh, we'll see you next week.